mind and body are unable to regulate, trauma survivors can experience varying, varying results and symptoms. How do we get into that sort of state? We all have within us a limited capacity of how much trauma we can process, both at one particular time as well as cumulatively. And if you think about it like a computer hard drive, um, you know, we've got this computer hard drive within our body and this is what processes all of our trauma. And, and generally speaking, that sort of uh, drive is about 70% full. So that gives us a 30% buffer of free space to be able to deal with all of the daily things that we're dealing with on a regular basis. Um, all of a sudden we find ourselves in a situation where we're dealing with an extremely uh, traumatic event, or what we'll call a critical incident. And what happens is that critical incident takes up so much of that free space on our hard drive, we're now teetering, that hard drive went from being 70% full to about 98 to 99% full. And then something minor, we'll lock our keys in our car, we'll misplace a file, we get stressed out. And when our body goes to that hard drive to process the stress that we're dealing with, all of a sudden now the hard drive is full. And what happens to a computer hard drive and it, when it gets full? It crashes. It ceases to be able to perform the, tump, the function that it did originally. And that's what happens with us. And so when we find ourselves in that situation, our mind and body are now unable to regulate trauma. And so what happens is we get a, a varying degree of different sort of symptoms. We have what's known as uh, sympathetic reactions and um, we have what's called parasympathetic reactions. So sympathetic reactions, these include things like anger, uh, irritability, anxiety, panic attacks, restlessness, uh, obsessive thoughts, the inability to concentrate, avoidance, chronic pain, uh, inability to trust, and seeking unhealthy distractions, many times uh, in the areas of substance abuse. And then we look at the parasympathetic reactions, flat effect, inability to communicate, empty gaze, that feeling of being disconnected. It can create feelings of hopelessness, depression, self-blame, uh, guilt, uh, people that feel withdrawn. So it's not only important to recognize that uh, when we start to identify ourselves feeling like this, and we're thinking to ourselves, why am I feeling like this? Uh, why am I angry? Why did I, why did I shout at my kids? Or why did I have a, a uh, anger discussion with my with my spouse um, to really have a look and say wow you know am I in a position right now where this is sort of a, a symptom that's a direct result of something traumatic I dealt with that day or perhaps it's cumulative but also to be able to recognize those in your colleagues because when you see behavior that's just sort of not indicative of the normal uh, personality or level of profession of one of your colleagues it's important to understand too that that could quite possibly be um, as a result of uh, trauma and that person's mental hard drive has become full and now their body is not able to properly process it the way that it usually does.